What's up guys, it's Bumpkins. Today is Wednesday, March 2nd. Wednesday means new comic book day. New comic book day means new comic book haul video. As always, I went down to Infinity Flux here in Chattanooga, Tennessee for another big old stack of books and a couple other goodies as well. Real quick guys, uh, if you are in the US and you are looking for a comic book shop, uh, reach out to Infinity Flux. They do ship all over the country. Uh, however you're watching this, they'll be linked or tagged or there'll be some way to contact them. So if, you, uh, if you're looking for something, if you don't have a comic shop or if you're just looking for a different one, uh, reach out to them, let them know what you're looking for and uh, maybe they can help you out. But let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, there's a lot of books to talk about and one thing I'll say real quick is last night, my son and I actually got to see The Batman. Um, it is a long movie. We were gone for like four hours and it totally threw off my reading schedule. I usually read most of my DC books on Tuesday nights and everything else on Wednesdays. Because we were gone all night last night, I didn't get to read my DC books, which meant I read, I had to read, read everything today, which means I didn't get to read as much as I wanted to this time. So a lot of these books, I'm not going to know what's going on yet because I haven't read them, but I'll do my best. So I did read Amazing Spider-Man number 91. This is just continuing the Beyond storyline. I think there's two more parts after this. I think number 93 is the last one. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the case. Anyway, this one, uh, it's got the cool uh, Carnage Forever variant. And uh, like I said, it's just continuing the storyline. Peter and Ben are working together against Beyond and their, um, I guess they have like a villain department, like how they were uh, using Ben to do hero stuff. They all have a separate department for villains and it's weird stuff though. So Peter and Ben are taking that on. Uh, ben uh, is, he really wants to take down, uh, I think her name is Maxine. She is sort of, she's not the head of Beyond, but she's over the department that's sort of controlling him. He wants to take her down. Meanwhile, Peter has to deal with whatever is behind door Z. We don't know that yet. Actually, we do, but I won't tell you what it is. Uh, so the revelations of that, I guess we'll see next issue. Still a really fun storyline. Uh, I'm enjoying this and can't wait to see what happens next. Black Panther number four. So I missed number three because I didn't pre-order it, because uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep going with the series. Um, but after I read number two, I said, yeah, I do want to keep reading this, but I'd already missed the, the FOC for number three. I do have, uh, I did pre-order uh, the second print of number three, which comes out next week. So I will wait till next week, read that, and then read this, and uh, it should be really fun. So another one I didn't read, but for a different reason. So this is Daredevil Woman Without Fear number three. So. Normally I would have read this one right off the bat because this has been a really fun mini-series. But um, Chip Zdarsky on his Substack today sent out a message saying, Hey, don't read this one yet because it spoils, I guess, what happens in uh, Devil's Reign number 5, which comes out next week. So um, I'm going to hold on to it. And uh, although I think I know what happens, I think I saw something online which I didn't mean to see. Um, but I'm not real sure, so it still might be kind of a surprise. I won't say anything else. But uh, I'm going to wait for Devil's Reign number 5 next week, and then I will come back and read this one. So then to go along with all that, a couple more that I didn't get the chance to read uh, yet, but uh, I'm going to jump into it pretty soon. Devil's Reign Spider-Man number 1. So this is uh, a tie-in, obviously, with Devil's Reign. This is Spider-Man's story, um, Ben Riley's Spider-Man story. Um, yeah, he wasn't in such great shape when last we saw him, so uh, maybe... These haven't come out in perfect order. There have been some delays and one cancellation in regards to Luke Cage's book. So um, I'm not sure if this is going to tell how he got the crap kicked out of him or what. But uh, that should be cool. Um, I like the Rose. Is that the Rose? I haven't seen the Rose since, uh, what is it, like late 80s, early 90s Spider-Man? So yeah, that's going to be really fun to catch up on. And then Devil's Reign X-Men number two. I didn't get to read this one either, but the first one was interesting. Um, we got to learn a little bit of backstory between Emma Frost and Kingpin, which I wouldn't necessarily have ever put them together. And then how does Elektra fit into that? So that's going to be really cool as well. So I am actually may wait until um, Devil's Reign number five next week and then just catch up on all this Devil's Reign and goodness. So I did read Fantastic Four number 41, just continuing the Reckoning War storyline. These don't really have like part number whatever. It's just like the next part. Um, but this one was pretty good. Uh, the the cliffhanger of last issue was pretty interesting. Something happened with Reed. And uh, we get to see a little bit more of that this issue, but not a lot. But we get some cool moments with Ben. Um, we get some cool moments with Johnny as he's gone off to the planet Spire to help the Unparalleled with the Annihilation wave they're facing. And he's he gets to really unleash his power and sort of rally the troops there. And of course, uh, you've got um, Sue and uh, Reed and Ben... 
uh, dealing, uh, you know, trying to save the Mkron crystal because all reality could collapse if, uh, you know, that gets taken taken hold of. So, just another really good, solid part in the Reckoning War, and I'm, I'm enjoying this one. Moon Knight number nine. So this issue was really interesting. So again, with the Devil's Reign thing, the last issue of Devil's Reign, uh, Moon Knight was in jail. And because of that, Moon Knight number eight was all about Hunter's Moon, not Moon Knight. Um, and now Moon Knight's back in. We still don't have the Devil's Reign Moon Knight tie-in yet. I think maybe that's next week. I'm not real sure. But... Um, Outside of all that, this issue was pretty cool. It's almost kind of sort of a standalone issue, too. Uh, Moon Knight gets a new base of operations um, because his other one was destroyed. But it's... and that That's kind of what the story is about. The story that we go through here leads to that. So uh, it's really interesting. It's really kind of strange. But um, yeah, it's really, really good. This just continues to be a really cool series for Marvel. She-Hulk number two. Uh, this was one of the ones I wanted to read, didn't get the chance to. I'm loving these like solid color covers with just She-Hulk on them. Um, I don't know if this ties into Reckoning War or not. She-Hulk and Jack of Hearts both are certainly right in the thick of it in the Fantastic Four book in Reckoning War. I don't know if this ties into that or not. I wish I'd gotten a chance to read it because um, if it does, you know, I'm, I'm interested in that story. I want to read them all. But um, the first one was good. I can't wait to see uh, how good this one is. Another one that I was really bummed that I didn't get the chance to read yet is Strange number one. So the death of Doctor Strange wrapped up um, maybe about a month or so ago. Um, no spoilers for any of that, but as you can tell by the cover, uh, we have a new Sorcerer Supreme now. Klee, is it Klee? I don't know if it's Klee or Clay, but but I, I call her Klee, C-L-E-A. I guess it's Klee. But um, Doctor Strange, uh, Doctor Strange's one-time wife, I believe. I'm not so well versed on her. But I guess she is going to be the new Sorcerer Supreme, and uh, that should be really interesting. The thing about this book is, this one was really hard to choose which cover to get. So I went with the Art Germ cover, the J. Scott Campbell cover was really cool, the Scotty Young cover is really cool, and there's a couple others as well. Um, it was really hard to decide which one, but I went with the good old Art Germ cover. And then last from Marvel, but one I didn't get the chance to read again, is What If Miles Morales, number one, What If Miles Morales Became Captain America? So unfortunately... At least, I flipped through this a little bit and didn't see it. Uh, he doesn't wear this suit. This suit is awesome, and this was on the cover to like... I think it was like Miles Morales number 28 or something. Um, it was it was one of the Captain America 80th anniversary covers. Um, and we get to see the suit again. I love this suit. I mean, I don't know why he would wear it in the comics, because it is a hybrid of him and Captain America. But, um, and I don't know if this series is kind of spun out of what happened at the end of the most recent Miles Morales issue. I'm not real sure. I flipped through it and it didn't really seem to tie to that, but maybe it does. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to read this. Um, like I said, I know the costume's on in here. I love that costume. But uh, Miles Morales is Captain America. It should be pretty interesting. As for DC, we've got Batman number 121. So speaking of the Batman, I did read this one last night after coming home from seeing the Batman. Not that this has anything to do with that, but I was just on a Batman kick and wanted to read it. So this wraps up the Abyss storyline. Which was fine. Um, it didn't really uh, blow up my skirt like I thought it would, but um, it was it was all right. Um, I'm really excited for the upcoming uh, Shadow War, the crossover with Batman and Robin in his own book, and then Deathstroke, and then they just announced the new creative team of Chip Zdarsky and Jorge Jimenez, uh, which uh, that's a power duo right there. That that should be some awesome Batman stories. Not a bad story arc, um, just not like the the my favorite one ever. I like Batman in Gotham City. I guess he doesn't always have to be there, but, you know, Batman in Gotham is some of the, you know, some of the best Batman stories ever. And this one, he was uh, off in uh, Europe, I think, uh, messing around with Batman Inc. So, um, it was fine, uh, but I'm not sad that it's over and I'm ready for the next story. One that I just read a little while ago and loved, Dark Knights of Steel number five. So, this just continues to be a, a banger from Tom Taylor. Between this and Dark Ages, I mean, it's just two major, awesome, but also separate from all other continuity stories for both DC and Marvel. Um, we do get some uh, another twist, I guess, that I didn't see coming in this, that I'm not really sure that I love, but in Tom Taylor, I trust, so uh, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna ride it out and, and see where it goes. Maybe it's not gonna go where I thought, but, um, yeah, a couple shocking moments in this, actually. Uh, we get some nice Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn moments. 
um, we get introduced well, introduced in this world to, to two more characters that we're familiar with. Um, we get to see them in this. Just more outstanding storytelling. I'm loving this series. I wish it would go on. I wish this and Dark Ages would go on forever because I love this book. Detective Comics number 1055. You know I've got to get the Lee Romeo variant. I love that Batman is on the covers here because Batman is not in this storyline. So this is a continuation of the Arkham Tower storyline. Uh, we're still not done, but we're getting closer to the end. Um, I can't remember what part we're on, but there's only it's tw it's a 12 part thing. So I think this is like maybe eight or nine. I'm not sure. But um, things at Arkham Tower are just completely bonkers at this point. The veil has been lifted, all, everything has been revealed, and now it's up to Nightwing and Oracle and Batwoman and Batgirl and Huntress to make sense of it all. So it's a really interesting story. Um, I'm really enjoying it. The backup story is really interesting too. Um, the backup story has been neat because the last issue, the backup story, took place around the time of the... Um, the Nightfall and the Night Quest and uh, that whole storyline where Jean-Paul Valley was Batman and now it takes place um, around the time of Cataclysm. So we, you know we get to see um, how I don't remember, I don't know the kid's name and I feel like I, sh I would if I had read the uh, storyline before this but um, we get to see how the Cataclysm affects him. So yeah just a, just a solid uh, the Arkham Tower story is really good the backup story is good I'm enjoying this book. One that I didn't read because I'm just super duper far behind is Justice League 73. We've only got two more issues before the Justice League supposedly dies and then that's going to lead into Dark Crisis, I guess. So I am going to get caught up on this before that storyline. I'll probably just wait at this point for number 75, which is the last issue of this series. Um, I'll probably wait for that and just binge all the way through Justice League to get ready for Dark Crisis. And another one that I didn't read because I'm one issue behind is Justice League Incarnate. This is number five. I haven't read number four yet either, but this is the end of this mini series. I haven't been loving it, but um, you know, I read the first three. I had to finish it out with the last two. So now that it's out, I'm going to read four and read five, and then uh, we'll see how it is. Okay, so one I'm really excited about but I only read part of it, is The Nice House on the Lake number seven. So you guys know I love this book. This is one of my absolute, absolute top favorites from DC right now. I did start into this one, and then I stopped. Because I don't remember what happened in the last issue. But it's not my fault. The last issue came out in November. So we're like four or five months away from that now. I think it was early November. Now we're early uh, March. So yeah, we're five months away from it now. Um, so... I stopped in the middle because there's something glaring about it that doesn't make sense. I need to go back and reread number six um, and then jump into this one. What I did read was super cool and super interesting, but I need to refresh my brain on what happened. So I'm going to do that and then I'll read this and I'm super excited to do that. And then two that kind of go hand in hand with each other that I'm really bummed that I didn't get the chance to read yet, but I'm really excited to is Suicide Squad number 13. So I, I talk about it every month that uh, I'm really surprised that more people aren't talking about this book. This is a really, really fun, solid book from DC right now. It's been a really fun storyline. Like I said, almost every time I was going to drop it at one point, then got caught up and said, wow, this is actually a really fun book. I want to keep going. You know, we've got um, Amanda Waller and her Suicide Squad, some of whom don't want to work for her, and then Rick Flagg and his own squad, and they're trying to take her down. And then now they are all getting wrapped up in this War for Earth 3. Uh, so this is War for Earth 3 number one of a two-part limited series. But in between one and two, you've got things like uh, Suicide Squad number 13, Teen Titans Academy number 13. I think there's a Flash in there and maybe another one I can't quite remember. So um, I need to read this first and then I'm going to read that. And then we will see what happens in the War for Earth 3 next week or whenever the next part comes out. Once again, it was a small image in Indies Week, but again, um, I'm reading most of those or I'm trying to read most of those in trade, so I don't have as many individual issues of those anymore, but I do have crossover number 12. So this was supposedly like the big one, right? So Donny Cates even, um, I think he put out a video or a tweet or something that said, this is the one to get. There was a, a, a shocking ending at the end of number 11 which was pretty cool and now we get to see that play out in issue number 12 i won't say anything about what it is um this i guess this does move the story forward by the end it looks like the story is going to push forward but i think this is the big one because of what happens in it um it was pretty it was pretty wild it's pretty interesting this book is 
so meta and so aware of itself, uh, it's it's not even funny. But uh, it's really, um, it, it's a fun book. I do feel like the story's kind of getting off the rails a little bit. Kind of, uh, It's getting away from me, like I'm having a little bit more trouble figuring out what's going on. Um, I also don't know how long it lasts. I Like, I think it may be... It's, well, I don't know. I don't know if it's an ongoing or just like a maxi series or whatever, but it's still really fun. Um, the thing that happens in it is really interesting. Uh, so yeah, this is a good, good issue. And then another one that I was bummed that I didn't get to read yet is Noctera number eight. So number seven came out just a little while ago and started off a new storyline, kind of like with, um, well, a lot of image books are doing this now where they tell a story arc and then they take some time off. Seven was the jump start of a new story arc after that break and then now we've got number eight. So seven was really good. It looks like we're we're getting a little bit more of Blacktop Bill. We had him in that Blacktop Bill special, but now he, he looks to be figuring into the main story a little bit more. So I can't wait to see what he's up to. And then one that I did read uh, that I thought was pretty darn cool is Rogue Sun number one. So. I think it was last week, uh, super, the, the super massive crossover with Radiant Black, Rogue, Rogue Sun, and Inferno Girl Red came out. I didn't read that because I was behind on Radiant Black. Since then, I have caught up on Radiant Black and I read Super Massive, which was an awesome one shot. Like, I bring those three characters together more often. Rogue Sun was our, um, well, that was our, that was our first look at Rogue Sun. And now we get this book, although it's not necessarily the same Rogue Sun, which I thought was kind of interesting. But um, this looks to sort of follow in the same vein of Radiant Black, where you have a young, armored, helmeted hero who's trying to learn the ropes. Um, although we don't know what that's going to look like for him, if it's going to be, you know, if he's going to have the same struggles and go through the same trials and tribulations as uh, as what's going on over in Radiant Black, or if it's going to be a little bit different. But uh, like I said last week, I really love the little universe that Image is building within these titles. Uh, I don't know if they're ever going to incorporate anybody else. I really hope Inferno Girl Red figures into that at some point. But uh, yeah, this was a really fun book. I'm going to stick with this one for a while. And then one that I was super excited to see in my pull box because it came out a while back and I missed out on it. Um, and then because of that, I was going to just sort of hop off the series and maybe wait for trades or whatever, is the last book you'll ever read, number five. So I completely missed this one. Um, and uh, so I haven't read... I'm, I am caught up on the series uh, through four. It's been a while since I've read it, so I need to go back and jog my memory. But this is an interesting book. I thought maybe this was a mini series, but I'm kind of thinking it's an ongoing. So I might hop off after this first story arc and wait for trades after that. But it's really interesting, uh, from what I remember anyway. Things are uh, things are really coming to a head. With uh, is there name Rue or is that uh, a different book? I can't quite remember. But uh, but things are com coming to a head. Her. Um, you know, the book that she wrote and the effect it's having and the fact that she knows about it, I think, is really interesting. So I got to catch up on this and, um, you know, see how interesting it gets. And then I picked up a few books from the dollar bins as well. Fantastic Four versus X-Men number four. I had one through three. This is only a four issue miniseries, so that was a no brainer to pick up. Ghost Rider Blaze, Spirits of Vengeance, number 16. So I love this series back in the 90s, the whole Midnight Suns thing. This is Road to Vengeance. The Missing Link. Um, this series only ran for like 23 issues, I think. Um, and I have about half of them, I think. So I need to finish these out. But uh, Johnny Blaze, Danny Catch Ghost Rider, hanging out uh, with this... Uh, wait, is that Johnny Blaze? Like all cybernetic? I don't remember what's up with that. But uh, yeah, I couldn't I couldn't uh, pass that up. Had to add that to my collection. And then I talked about this series a little bit last week. And you guys know I love this era of DC. This is from 1991. This is Armageddon 2001, number one. Um, and I got that Armageddon, that other mini-series, I think, last week. Um, so, yeah, this is another DC book that, you know, I, I, I was aware of. I saw on the spinner racks back in 91. But I, was, I wasn't I was really reading DC back then, so I kind of missed out on it. This also is, um, this series is funny because this is very obviously pre-internet. But this is one of the first times that uh, spoilers really crept into the zeitgeist and actually ended up changing um the the direction of the story uh whoever the bad guy is here i don't remember his name he was supposed to be uh revealed to be one character but then the spoilers came out about who that character about who he was going to be so then the writers changed who it was going to be and from what i read it didn't really make much sense or something this isn't a very well regarded series but um like i said i i i've never read this and i want to sort of go back and, and check out what i missed back in the day 
Um, I love this era of DC, so I had to pick that up. Just on a whim from 1985, Red Tornado number three of a four part mini series, and I have number one as well, so I just thought I would add to that. From 1986, so keeping in this theme of that uh, mid to late 80s uh, DC, Superpowers number two. I have the first one, and this is from 1986, so I think this is considered like the, the third Superpowers miniseries. I love Superpowers. Um, it's my favorite toy line of all time. I had a bunch of them. We've got um, all of the characters from that toy line in this book, and because I only had number one, number two was a no-brainer. And then rounding out the early 90s uh, DC goodness, Superman Annual number four, part of the Eclipso, the Darkness Within storyline. So I've mentioned it before, uh, this is another one like Armageddon 2001 where I was aware of this Eclipso storyline, but I didn't read it back then. And I have been able to find a few more of these in the dollar bins over the last few weeks. So I was very happy to add that to that collection. But the fun doesn't stop there. I got a couple extra goodies as well. A couple collected editions. Frontiersman, the first trade paperback from Image. I picked up the first issue, but didn't end up reading it because I just I just really wanted to, you know, like I like I mentioned with the other Image and Indie books, I wanted to read this as a collection. So the first trade finally came out. This collects the first five issues. I've heard a lot of good things about this. I've been very eager to read it, and I can't wait to break that open. And then last but not least, Volume 4 of the hardcover Superman, Man of Steel, uh, the John Byrne years, I guess. It's not really called that. It's just Superman, the Man of Steel, Volume 4. But this uh, this is the Byrne era. So this is uh, continuing the Superman books um, post-crisis from when John Byrne relaunched Superman's origin in the Man of Steel miniseries. And then he jumped on and, and wrote and drew Superman and Action Comics um, for, a, for a time. Uh, this book just collects... Um, I don't know if... What I don't know is, John Byrne didn't work on all of these. Like, this has Action Comics 598 through 600, Superman 16 through 22, Superman Annual 2, Adventures of Superman 439 to 444. So he didn't work on all those, so hopefully that means that they are just, even though they, they started with just the, the Byrne stuff, that they're just um, continuing with all the books from that era, because I love that era of Superman. I have the other three, and I can't wait to put this on the shelf with those others. So that's it guys, that was another awesome day of comics. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video. If you like this video or any of the other videos on my channel, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a sarcastic thumbs up. And if nothing else, just let me know what you picked up. If you are um, waiting for trades for indies, did you get some cool dollar bin stuff? Did you fall behind on your reading like I did? Just uh, whatever you got, just let me know. I love comic books. I could talk about them with a room full of people or just to a camera. Guys, don't forget, comic books are supposed to be fun. They are just another fun form of storytelling. There is clearly plenty of stuff out there that everybody can go out, look through everything, find what they like, what suits them, what suits their tastes, and simply just disregard everything else and let everybody else enjoy those books. Also, don't forget, it doesn't matter how much you buy each week or each month, what makes a great comic book haul is that the stuff that you get matters to you, is special to you, really gets you excited to sit down and break these things open and actually read them and enjoy the stories, enjoy the art. Um, as long as you, uh, you know, whatever you get, you're excited and happy about it, that's what makes a great comic book haul. Whether it's one book, 10 books, 100 books, it doesn't matter. As long as you enjoy them, that is a great haul. So guys, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.